Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to look at properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Now, all of these shapes we're going to deal with are special kinds of parallelograms. So all of those properties that we dealt with with parallelograms are also going to hold true for these shapes. We're just going to add additional properties for each shape. So let's first talk about a rhombus. And the big property with a rhombus is that it's a parallelogram, so it's got four sides, but all four of those sides are going to be exactly the same size. It's going to have four congruent sides. So if we're going to draw out a picture of a rhombus, it'll look something like our parallelograms that we've been dealing with so far, except all of these sides have to be exactly the same length. Now there are some additional properties that happen because of these four congruent sides happening. And one of the properties is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So if I draw in those diagonals, since they're perpendicular to each other, that means that it creates right angles everywhere where those diagonals are intersecting. Another property with the diagonals is that when we draw in these diagonals, it also bisects each of those angles around the outside. So if we were looking at our picture, this piece of the angle right here would be exactly the same size as this piece. That diagonal is splitting that obtuse angle into two congruent pieces, and that's going to be true for all of the angles around the outside of our picture. Now, they're not all necessarily going to be exactly the same size, but each individual piece, when we draw that diagonal in, those have to be congruent to each other. And our last property is, as we're looking at all of these different triangles that are created within our rhombus, those are all going to be congruent. So we're going to say that we have four congruent right triangles within our rhombus. Okay, so this triangle on top is congruent to the triangle on the right and the triangle on bottom and the triangle on the left. All four of those triangles have to be congruent to each other. In this example, we're taking a look at a rhombus and we're given a couple of measures. We're told that the length from A to E is seven and we're told that the measure of this little angle down here is 34 degrees. And there are three things that I want to find with this picture. The first thing I want to find is I want to figure out what the measure of angle ADE is. So that's going to be this small angle over here. And what we should remember about a rhombus is one of the properties says that diagonals bisect angles. So this little piece of our angle up here has to be exactly the same size as this little piece of our angle down below it. So since that's a 34 degree angle, our other angle also has to be a 34 degree angle. Next thing we're going to find is the measure of angle BCD, which is this entire angle down in the bottom right hand corner. Now what I want to look at is we just said that this little piece of our angle up here was 34 degrees. So that entire angle is 68 degrees. And what we have to remember is that a rhombus is a special kind of parallelogram. And one of the properties of a parallelogram is that consecutive angles must be supplementary. They have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we take 180 and subtract off the 68 that we used for this angle on the left hand side, then we end up with 112 degrees. So the measure of angle BCD is 112 degrees. Okay, now the last thing that we're going to find is the length from A to C. We're given this length from A to E as 7, and another property of parallelogram says that diagonals bisect each other. So this piece has to be congruent to that piece. So if the top piece is 7, this bottom piece also has to be 7. We want the entire length from A to C, so I'm just going to add those two things together. So that length should be 14. Our next shape that we're going to talk about is a rectangle. And again, a rectangle is a special kind of parallelogram. We're just going to add additional properties to this. So a rectangle is a parallelogram that has four congruent angles. And using what we know about the angles inside of a quadrilateral, the total angle sum has to be 360 degrees. And if we've got four congruent angles, those all have to be right angles. So if we draw out a picture of our rectangle, We've got right angles happening in all of those corners. 
Now rectangles do have another property and if we draw on those diagonals they're going to be exactly the same length so we're going to say that the diagonals are congruent. So if I draw on this diagonal connecting the top left to the bottom right and that other diagonal those two things have to be exactly the same size. In this example we're given a rectangle and our two measurements that we're given, this length from x to v is going to be 9, and the measure of this little acute angle in the top left-hand corner is 62 degrees. So the first thing we want to find is we want to figure out what the measure of x, w, y is. So that's going to be this little angle up here. Now the first thing we have to remember is that every corner angle within a rectangle is a 90 degree angle. So we're looking at this We've used up 62 degrees over here. We need to figure out how big that angle is so that these things add up to 90 degrees. So if we take 90 minus 62, we should end up with a 28 degree angle. So XWY is a 28 degree angle. Next thing we're going to find is the measure of angle WVX. And what we're going to do in order to figure this out is I'm going to kind of look at this picture a little bit more in depth. This piece up here is 9 which means that this piece down here also has to be 9. And since our diagonals are congruent, that's one of the properties of a rectangle, since this piece is 18, the other length would also have to be 18. And I can actually fill that in right away for WY. Why don't we do that while we're at it? That length is 18. But these diagonals also bisect each other. So this piece has to be 9, and this piece has to be 9. So if we're looking at this top triangle, we've got two pieces of our triangle that are congruent, making it an isosceles triangle which means that our two base angles are also congruent. So since this angle is a 28 degree angle, this other angle also has to be a 28 degree angle. If we add those together, that ends up being 56 degrees. Now we should remember that the angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we take 180 and subtract off that 56 that we used with our two base angles, we should be able to figure out the measure of this angle WVX and it ends up being 124 degrees. Our last shape that we've got to deal with is a square, and again a square is a special kind of parallelogram. But a square kind of combines ideas between a rhombus and a rectangle. A rhombus had all four congruent sides, a rectangle had all four congruent angles, a square has both of those things. And since a square has both of those properties of a rhombus and of a rectangle, it's also going to have all of those additional extra properties that went along with each shape. So if we draw out our square, we've got four congruent sides and we've got four right angles within our shape. Taking a look at our last example, we've got a square and we're only given one measure in our square. We've got the length from T to R as 15. The first thing we want to find is the measure of angle PTQ. Now what we have to remember is that squares are parallelograms and their rhombuses and their rectangles. So they have a bunch of special properties. One of the properties they have, because they're a special kind of rhombus, is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So all of these angles that are created on the inside where these diagonals are meeting up are 90 degree angles. So the measure of angle PTQ is a 90 degree right angle. Next thing we're going to look at is the measure of angle QRT, so that's going to be this little angle down on the bottom right hand corner of our picture. Now this is a special kind of rectangle so all of the corner angles have to be 90 degree angles and since it's a special kind of rhombus our diagonals bisect the angles so if we bisect the 90 degree angle we end up getting a 45 degree angle. Last thing we're going to find is the length from R to Q, so that length on the outside of our figure. Now we're actually going to use this kind of special right triangle for this. Since this is a 45 degree angle, this up here also has to be a 45 degree angle, and we've got a 90 degree angle in the middle. So this is a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. So if this 15 is one of the legs, then in order to find the length of the hypotenuse, we take the length of the leg times root 2. So this length out here is 15 root 2. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.